Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you have been well, and I hope that you are ready for a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend. I hope you're going to have the opportunity to spend time with family, or not, depending on your family. Um, today we are talking about um, independent contractors or employees. So if you are bringing someone on um, to work with you in some capacity, um, this is a, a situation that you need to evaluate. So uh, let's talk about, first of all, what we're talking about. We're not just talking about if you're a business owner. We're also talking about um, if you hire a caregiver or some other household type of employee, um, this is relevant to you too, uh, but primarily business owners here. Um, Please note that California has very strict rules around this. Um, so if you are in California, um, please be sure to consult a local pro, which is always good advice. Um, so why does this matter? Um, so as an employer, right, your, um, your life is easier if the person that you are bringing on to work with you uh, is an independent contractor because you just issue them a 1099 at the end of the year, they pay their own taxes, you don't have to pay in to um, L&I or anything for them. So it's, it's simpler for you, it's easier for your budgeting, and so employers usually want to bring people on as an independent contractor. Employees, on the other hand, generally want to be treated as employees because they want you to match their Social Security and Medicare. They want you to be to have the protection of an employment system and the LNI system. Um, so there's always this um, balance between um, what the employer wants, what the employee wants, and what the government agencies care about is what is true. If you look at the facts of the relationship between you and this worker, um, based on some factors that um, have been established um, in the law and in the court process, um, which, which side does this relationship fall under? Government agencies are looking for um, situations where workers have been misclassified, and it usually comes up when a worker goes to collect unemployment, or they have an injury, they go collect workman's comp, um, or sometimes workers will um, file a determination request with the IRS. Um, and so all of these agencies have a vested interest in making sure that workers are classified correctly, um, and you don't want to get in trouble, you don't want those penalties, they can really add up. So independent contractors, generally have their own business license. They may have their own website. They have their own insurance. Um, they provide their own expertise, their own tools and supplies. They do their own continuing education if that applies. They, um, in this relationship, are able to delegate the work to their own staff. So in their contract with you, um, you're contracting with their organization, um, even if it's just them, and they could bring on someone to help them do the work. Um, they is issue you an invoice, um, and theoretically they could lose money on the project based on your contract and what expenses they have related to it. They generally perform similar tasks for others, for other businesses or other individuals, um, and the contract is clear on that independent relationship. Just having a contract that says that this is an independent contract relationship doesn't necessarily make it so, but having that contract does help um, as any of these factors in weighing toward an independent contractor relationship. An employee, on the other hand, um, in that relationship, the employer has control. So the employer has control of how the work is done, when the work is done, where the work is done. The employer is usually providing the materials, the tools, the training to do the work. Um, an employee can't just bring in someone else to do their job for them. Um, and just because an employee may only work sporadically or may only work part-time does not make them an independent contractor. You can totally have an employee that works four hours a month um, or only works for a two-week basis. It still could be an employee relationship. Um, so let's look at a couple of examples. One is if you were an individual. Um, and you are bringing someone on to provide childcare services for you. 
If you're bringing someone on that's going to work solely for you, perhaps in your home, um, generally they're going to get a W-2 from you. Um, you need to be registered with Washington State um, and file state taxes with that. Um, you file an extra schedule on your federal tax return. A lot of um, legislators over the years have gotten in trouble for not doing this correctly. Um, on the other hand, if you choose to go with a child care center or you go with a child care provider who offers child care in their own home to multiple families um, or an independent babysitter that babysits for half the neighborhood, those are generally going to be independent contractor relationships. Um, in this case, you don't file a 1099 for them. Um, so business owners have to file 1099s, individuals don't. So let's look at a business example. If you own a plumbing company, for instance, um, and you bring on a marketing agency, um, this marketing agency has their own website, they have their own business license, they do all of your marketing for you, but also for other businesses, they are probably an independent contractor. Um, as a plumbing company, if you hire a plumber, they're doing the same kind of work that you are, especially in California. Even if they only work a few hours, in general, they're going to be your employee. There are certainly exceptions to that if they are independently licensed, bonded, and insured, and offering services to multiple businesses. But that one's, that one's one to be careful with. Your full-time office worker, on the other hand, probably an employee. So documentation, um, for independent contractors, it's always easiest to get their W-9 before you write them a check, before you give them a first payment. So just in starting a relationship with an independent contractor, get a W-9, get proof of their business license, proof of insurance, depending on the industry, um, have that contract on hand um, so that you'll have what you need to issue a 1099 in January, whether it's required or not. You'll have the information and won't be chasing them in January. For an employee, um, you have to be registered as an employer within the state. Um, you'll need a W-4 and an I-9 from the employee, um, which establishes that they are uh, legal to work in the United States. Um, and we highly recommend using a payroll service to file all of the required filings for that. Um, we did a video recently on um, hiring your first new hire in Washington State. We'll link to that. Um, I'm also going to provide a link below to a guide produced by Washington Labor and Industries, which is really good and goes through a bunch of the questions. It's a little skewed on the side of a construction company, um, but the questions that it asks to try to suss out whether it's an independent contractor or an employee are really good questions. So did I miss anything? Did I make anything less clear instead of more clear? Let me know uh, what topic should we uh, address next. Um, subscribe, let me know what we should talk about, and uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye.